In this video, we are going to talk about the concept of a derivative, a huge concept in calculus. So what is it and what other names does it go by? So we have these boxes here. They're called like identical twin boxes. What that means, if you think about identical twins, they have the exact same DNA, but you don't normally say, oh, I had two twin girls. I'm going to name one Sarah and then the next one I'll also name her Sarah. So. Normally with twins, same DNA, but typically two different names, right? So that's what it's going to be for these boxes here. So they're going to have the same formula, which is nice because that means less formulas, but they're going to go by a couple different names. So even though it's the same formula, it might be called something different um, depending upon the application that you are using. So first thing we have in geometry, we would call it the slope of the secant line. So the slope of the secant line in a physical application would be called average rate of change. Average rate of change. So two completely different names, slope of the secant line, average rate of change, doesn't sound like they're the same thing. Just like with twins, you might meet somebody named John and somebody named Sarah, and you might not think they would be twins, but they could be. So, um, so we have two completely different names, but the same formula. And this formula comes from having two points. So I'm going to put two points up here. So my first point, P, is going to be at the point X. It's going to have any X value and then any Y value. In function notation, we'd call that Y value F of X. Our other point, Q, has an X value that might be different. So I'm going to call it X plus H. It might be different by 1 or something like that. And then the Y value is going to be plugging into that function, F of X plus H. So in algebra, it's a little bit nicer. It's usually called x1, y1, and x2, y2. But we're fancy calculus students, so instead of calling it x1, we'll just call it a regular x. Instead of y1, it's f of x. And instead of x2, y2, we have x plus h and f of x plus h. So when we figure out this slope formula, it's still going to be that y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 that it was in algebra for slope, but now we have different notation. So instead of y2, that second y value was x f of x plus h minus f of x is our first y value over our x values, which are x plus h minus x. So one thing that you might notice here is these x's cancel out. So it's all over just a regular h, the difference in x's. So difference in y's over difference in x's, that's how we're going to find our slope of the secant line or average rate of change. It's the slope formula from algebra. It's just written with function notation, which is confusing at first. Our second set of identical twins, one formula, two different names, is the slope of the tangent line, which we're going to see that wording used a whole bunch, but we're also going to see instantaneous. So we also want instantaneous rate of change. And that is the exact same formula as the slope of the tangent line. So I'm going to leave some space towards the front here, but it's still a slope formula. So it's still going to be that f of x plus h minus f of x all over, we know x plus h minus x is just h. The difference here is we want to add a certain instance. So we're going to let h go to 0. We'll see why that is in just one second. So you have the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And that is how you find the slope of the tangent line and the instantaneous rate of change. And this is also called the derivative. So what do these things mean? Average rate of change versus instantaneous rate of change. What does that mean at all? So let's look at a real life problem that you can relate to. You're driving in a car for 100 miles 
and it takes you two hours. So we're going to drive 100 miles in two hours. What is our average rate of change have to be? On average, how fast do you need to go if you want to go 100 miles in two hours? You might already instantly know the answer, or you can use this slope formula. You want to get 100 miles, starting out zero miles away, over two hours, starting out zero hours away. So you're just going to do 100 miles divided by two hours. You have to go 50 miles per hour. That is your average rate of change. On average, you have to go 50 to get 100 miles in two hours. So that would be average rate of change. You'd use this regular slope formula, difference in y's over difference in x's, and that'll tell you, on average, your rate of change or the slope of the secant line. They're the same thing, average rate of change and slope of the secant line. But is that how fast you were going the entire time? Well, let's think realistically. If you leave where you are right now and drive 50 miles per hour, yes, you'll get 100 miles in two hours, but actually you'll probably get in an accident first. You probably can't go 50 miles per hour the entire time. So is that our speed the entire time? No, there are stoplights. So we're gonna slow down and be going zero at some points. And we're also gonna pass people when we can. If someone's going slow, we might catch us going 65 in some places, you know? So our average rate of change does not tell us our instantaneous rate of change. But we can make it tell us that if we have the limit as h goes to zero. If we let that difference in x's be as small as possible, right? If you have to get 100 miles in two hours, that doesn't tell me how fast you're going 30 minutes into your drive. But if you tell me at 31 minutes I was going 22 miles per hour and at 29 minutes I was going 22 miles per hour, you were probably going 22 miles per hour at 30 minutes exactly. So to take an average rate of change and look at the instantaneous rate of change, we just need to make the interval smaller. So again, if 15 minutes into the drive you're going zero miles per hour and 16 minutes per in the drive you're going zero miles per hour, I can probably guess that 15 and a half minutes in you're going zero miles per hour too. Somewhere in between that really small interval from 15 to 16 minutes. You're probably stopped at a stoplight. So the idea is if you want to go from average rate of change to instantaneous rate of change, make the interval smaller. Don't look from zero to two hours to see how fast you're going 40 minutes into your drive. Look from 39 to 41 minutes. Make it a really small interval. And if from 39 to 41 minutes, you do that average rate of change formula and it's 32 miles per hour, you're probably going 32 miles per hour at every single point on that small interval. So this is where the concept of the derivative comes from. It's instantaneous rate of change. It's that second formula. So the derivative, which is normally labeled f prime of x, so it'll have that prime, measures the slope of the tangent line or instantaneous rate of change of a function f of x and is given by this formula. f prime of x is going to equal the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, our difference in y's over our difference in x's is just h. Let's use this definition of a derivative to take our first derivative here. We have the function 4x plus 3, and we want to plug into this entire formula. The limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Lots to plug into. I'm going to take it step by step. We're going to do four steps to plug into this formula. The first thing I'm going to figure out is what is just f of x plus h going to be for this function. So plugging in f of x plus h. If you had to plug in f of 0, you'd just do 4 times 0 plus 3. If you have to plug in f of 10, you'd do 4 times 10 plus 3. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to replace that x, but instead of with a nice number, I'm going to replace it with f of x plus h plugging into function notation. So to calculate this out, I do need to distribute. I'm going to have 4 times x plus 4 times h plus 3. There's my f of x plus h. So I started plugging into the formula. I'm not plugged into the whole thing yet. 
My second step is going to be to subtract the original function. To plug into that whole numerator, I need to take that f of x plus h that we just calculated and subtract f of x, subtract the original function from it. So I'm going to take that 4x plus 4h plus 3 and subtract the entire original function. So I'm going to put parentheses on it. I need to subtract 4x plus 3, the whole original function, not just the first term. So we had some distributing in our first step and in our second step. So I have 4x plus 4h plus 3, and I need to subtract 4x, and I have minus a 3 as well. Can we simplify anything here? Yeah, we have a 4x minus 4x, those cancel, and then we have 3 minus 3. So f of x plus h minus f of x ends up just being 4h. There's our whole numerator. We've now plugged into the entire thing. All right. What else do we need to finish this formula? Well, we need the denominator. So we're going to take what we found in that first two steps, f of x plus h minus f of x, and we're going to divide it by h. So for this one, I'm going to have 4h and divided by h. What's 4h divided by h going to simplify to be? Just 4, right? So now we've done three steps. We did 1, which was f of x plus h. We did 2 by subtracting the original function. Our third step, divide by h. And now our last step in this four-step method is to take the limit as h goes to 0 of what we just found. So we're going to take the limit as h goes to 0 of 4 and see what we get. All we have left is 4. If we try to plug in h is 0, what are we going to get? Well, 4 is always 4. So no matter what h is going to, we're just going to get 4 out. So therefore, these three dots mean therefore, the derivative, we plugged into that whole formula. The derivative, we found that the limit as h goes to 0 of our f of x plus h minus f of x over h is just 4. There's our derivative. Lots of work to do this four-step process. Now we're going to learn a bunch of shortcuts that we never have to do that again. It was a lot of work, and there is a pattern to these that somebody else figured out so that we can use it later.